in this section, we'll do a hypothesis test for our population slope. So we're still doing linear regression, and we've learned how to interpret our slope and intercept. We've talked about a confidence interval for our slope. Now it's time for a hypothesis test for our slope. Okay, so there's this part for you to try here to decide how would you tell if two variables have a linear relationship. So make sure you pause it and do that. Okay. I would just like to point out that in this situation, notice if I drew a line, it would have a zero slope. A zero slope means it truly doesn't matter how much candy I eat, that's not going to affect my grades, or it's a way of saying the amount of candy has no relationship with grades if you have a zero slope. That's important now for our hypothesis test for slope. Okay, so now we know our slope of our line for our sample data, but we're often interested <coughs> in the slope of the line for the population of all the values. So suppose we want to know if two variables are associated. That means we want to know if there's a significant linear relationship between y and x, or we want to know if x can help us predict y. So what would be your null hypothesis, you think? So no hypothesis, I would think, is that they are not linear related, or they're not associated in any way. So no hypothesis would be the variables are not associated. Well, they're not linearly associated. And then the alternative, what you would be hoping to show, is that the variables are linearly associated. If the two variables are not associated or there is no linear relationship, then if the x values increase, what would you expect the y values to do? Okay. So I would think if they're not associated as x goes up, well let's say I start here. As x goes up though, if they don't have any kind of relationship, I would expect y to stay about the same. So if they are not related, if x goes up, I'd expect y to stay the same. And here is a scatter plot for two variables that are not related. Notice the slope of the line would have to be 0. So if your two variables aren't associated, then the y values don't change based on x values. That means our slope needs to be zero. It will be a horizontal line. Note that if there's no association between our two variables, there's no point in using a line to describe the data. The x values won't give us any useful information to predict the y values. So we often, if we're doing research, we have to do a hypothesis test to show that our slope would not be zero before someone's going to be interested in looking at our results. So our t-test is slope, for slope, when to use it, we want to know the value of our population slope, beta 1. The conditions, remember we did conditions for linear regression back on page 200. They again get very involved, we'll just check our three plots quickly to kind of make sure we don't see anything really bad in our three plots and that will be good enough for this class. The null hypothesis will always be that our population slope is zero or there is no linear relationship between the two variables. My test statistic will be my sample slope over its standard error, but again, we're just going to use computer output, so you don't even have to worry about that. And degrees of freedom would be n minus 2. p-values, though, are important to us, even with computers. So you have three different alternatives possible. Your slope can be greater than 0, which means your p-value being the right tail. That would mean there's a positive linear relationship, or if you were to draw your lines, you'd kind of be going up. If your slope is zero, that would mean, or less than zero, that would mean you have a negative linear relationship. That would be the area in the left. If beta one is not equal to zero, that just means it's a linear relationship. We don't really know or care if it's positive or negative, we just want to know if it's a linear relationship. And in that case, you would have two tails. You would look at the area in both tails. Now, Megastat automatically does a two-sided alternative hypothesis. If you want to test specifically for a positive or negative relationship, you have to find the p-value by hand or just divide it by two. Because Megastat will always do both tails. If you want just one tail, just divide their p-value by two. Okay. 
So here's our megas at output. We looked at it previously for confidence intervals. Remember, it will show you your response variable here for y. This second line here is always for your slope. Here it has my sample slope and its standard error. But notice it also has t with degrees of freedom. So I have 14 degrees of freedom, and this is my t test statistic. And right here, that's my p-value. So a hypothesis test is super easy. We just read off the test statistic and p-value. So let's continue our analysis of our fidgeting example. We'll conduct a hypothesis test to see if there's a significant linear relationship. Notice it doesn't say whether we want positive or negative. It just wants to know if there's a linear relationship. So in that previous example, we already checked our conditions for linear regression. It didn't tell me alpha. Let's do 0.05. For my hypotheses, the null will be that my slope beta 1 equals 0. The alternative will be that my slope is not equal to 0 because it didn't tell me if I think it should be positive or negative. So if my slope is 0, that means there is not a linear relationship. If my slope is not equal to 0, that means there is a linear relationship. Okay, then I need my test statistic. Again, we're just going to pull it off my table. So T, test statistic, make sure if you're interested in slope, you're doing that bottom row here for slope. T equals negative 4.642. My degrees of freedom equals 14. My p-value, make sure it's your p-value for slope, not your intercept, is 0 0.0004. For my decision, that's a small p-value. So I will reject my null hypothesis. For my conclusion then, I would say that we found evidence that the population slope is not zero. So our variables are linearly associated. Now remember, linear regression doesn't actually let us show cause and effect. It only demonstrates that the variables are associated and can help with predictions. So we can't actually show that NEA affects fat gain. Okay? It probably does, but we can't show it with linear regression for sure. Can you think of any lurking variables that might affect both NEA and fat gain? So what are some things that might affect both NEA and fat gain? So here are just some ideas. I don't know if they're true or not. Okay, so perhaps people who fidget have NEA have a hard time sitting still. And so they are more active and exercise more, which would then reduce fat gain. Or perhaps people in the study were more aware of what they were eating, so they had less fat gain because they were just paying attention to it because they were aware that people were going to be measuring their fat. The next problem is for you to try by yourself. I do want to go over this p-value with you. So a very small p-value just tells us that we're very sure there is a linear relationship between the two variables. It doesn't actually tell us how strong the relationship is, which might seem strange to you. But again, so the p-value just tells us we're very sure there's a linear relationship. If you want to know how strong the linear relationship is, you check the correlation. Correlation tells you how strong the linear relationship is. To me, this seems very similar to that statistical versus practical significance we learned about before, where the statistics will say we're very sure there's a linear relationship. And then you check the correlation to actually see, well, is the relationship strong enough that our points will actually be close to the line? Let's try this example then. 
we want to use our x values to predict our y values. Okay, so you'll notice it just has x and y for our dependent and independent variables. Remember, the second line always gives us values for our slope. Looking at my plots, we want to know if linear regression would be appropriate. Well, I could put a line through here, but it kind of looks like those points are just kind of randomly scattered about. So I'm going to reserve judgment on that for a minute. But my residuals look random, so that's fine. My normality plot looks good enough, straight enough. And if I put a line through, I mean, the line works. They're not close to line, the line, but it's not a curve. So use our plots to determine if linear regression is appropriate. Well, I think it would be okay. Now let's conduct our hypothesis test to see if there's a significant positive linear relationship between x and y. So when we go through, we check our conditions. Let's see, we pick alpha. I'll just use 0.05. We need our null and alternative hypotheses. The null hypothesis will always be that my slope equals zero. And the alternative, in this case, if we want a positive, we'll do greater than zero. So the null means there is not a significant linear relationship between x and y. The alternative, if my population slope is greater than zero, that would mean there is a significant linear relationship between x and y. Oh, not just that, we checked if my slope is greater than zero, so that means there's a significant positive linear relationship. Then, the next thing I need is my test statistic. So we come up, my test statistic is 0 0.0032, and I have 25 degrees of freedom. So t equals 0 0.032, degrees of freedom equals 25. Let's see what else. My p-value is 0.975. Okay. Although, remember, Megastat always does a two-tailed p-value. We have an alternative hypothesis for greater, so we only want the right tail. So we'll do the 0 0.975 divided by 2, which is 0 0.4875. So my p-value equals 0 0.4875. Well, that is a very big p-value. So I will fail to reject my null hypothesis that beta 1 equals 0. And I would say we didn't find enough evidence to say that my slope is greater than 0. So, okay, well, and we usually leave it there. So we didn't find enough evidence to say that the slope is greater than zero. So, okay, which makes sense because when I looked at this, it really looked like my slope would be about zero. Now, it might be interesting to look at what is our confidence interval for our slope. So again, all you have to do is look at the output, which goes from negative 0.1094 to 0.1129. So if we round just a little bit, 
the confidence interval is negative 0.11 to positive 0.11. So we are 95% confident that the population slope is between negative 0.11 and 0.11. So 0 is in that interval. So my population slope is probably 0. And if that's the case, is our line going to be useful to predict y values? No. If the slope is 0, then knowing what x is doesn't tell you anything about y. And that makes sense again because when I looked at this first graph, I looked and I'm like, oh, that looks like it would be a flat line. It doesn't seem like there's any pattern to those points. Like they really just seem to be scattered about.